In this uh, part, we will take up the last part of the brain, that is hind brain. So this is the third part, that is the hind brain, which is also known as rhombencephalon. In hind brain, there are three parts. The first, cerebellum. The second is pons and third is medulla. So let us first talk about these parts one by one. Cerebellum, it is solid. That means here there are no cavities. In case of cerebellum, there are uh, it is, uh, you can say it is the, the second largest part after cerebrum, uh, that is cerebral hemispheres. The cerebellum is also distinct and it is seen on the posterior side of the brain. And it has three lobes. Out of these three lobes, two lobes are large. Two lobes are large, which are known as cerebellar hemispheres. And one is small and long. It is known as vermis. So these are the three lobes. Two cerebellar hemispheres and one vermis. In case of cerebellum, there is one more very interesting thing. Outer is gray matter. Outer gray matter. And the inner white matter is divided into branching like a tree. Inner white matter is branched like a tree. And this branching is known as arbor vitae. So this is again a very important thing which is seen in case of Cerebellum. The function of cerebellum is specially voluntary control and it helps in maintaining posture and equilibrium. Maintains posture and equilibrium by voluntary control of muscles. The second part of a uh, midbrain is known as pons or pons veruli. It is oval, again paired structures, they are oval and their main function is coordination. Coordination between the forebrain and cerebellum between forebrain and cerebellum. Pons is also believed to have many nuclei. Nuclei are basically small collections of neurons and these nuclei are believed to control various uh, functions of our body like the facial expressions, certain involuntary actions like breathing centers and all those. So it helps in controlling involuntary functions like facial expressions, then uh, breathing centers. These are certain the nuclei, there's small structures which are there and these are collections of neurons. The third part that is medulla oblongata. Medulla oblongata is the last part of the uh, hind brain. It is triangular in shape and hollow. They are hollow. They have cavity and this cavity is called the fourth ventricle. Cavity is fourth ventricle. And this fourth ventricle is known as myloceal. Myloceal. And this myloceal is connected to the third ventricle by aqueduct of 
Sylvie and we have drawn those uh, connections earlier. So there are two cavities in the cerebral hemisphere. The third cavity that is third ventricle is in the diencephalon and this is the fourth ventricle which is known as myloceal. So myloceal anteriorly is connected to the third cavity, third ventricle by that aqueduct of sylvia which is also known as iter or from the or, or on the posterior side it uh, continues with that cavity which is in the spinal cord so this myloceal is connected so it is hollow its roof is non-nervous And this roof, non-nervous roof, makes the posterior choroid plexus. Posterior choroid plexus. Medulla is responsible for many involuntary functions. Many, many important involuntary functions are done by medulla. For example, medulla has centers for controlling heartbeat. So, it controls heartbeat because it has cardiac center. Then, it also has center for controlling breathing, which are known as respiratory centers. Respiratory centers. Plus, medulla also controls involuntary functions like peristalsis, sneezing, vomiting, urination, defecation. These are all involuntary actions which are under the control of medulla. So, medulla has a cavity which is known as myloceal or the fourth ventricle and as we said it is connected with the third ventricle which is in front of it with the help of uh, aqueduct of salvian and posteriorly with the cavity in the spinal cord which is known as central canal. The roof is non-nervous and there are main involuntary uh, centers which are there in the medulla and these are some important functions which are there. Now we are talking of two more very important things. One is in case of the central nervous system that is the part which we have talked of so far that is forebrain, midbrain and hindbrain all parts except pons and medulla they have gray matter outside and what mat uh, white matter inside but pons and medulla have gray matter inside and white matter outside have gray matter inside and white matter outside. This is totally reverse of what happens in most of the parts of the brain including cerebellum. In cerebellum also there is outer gray matter which is known as cerebellar cortex and inner is this white matter which is in the form of a branch structure which is known as arbor vitae. After that, that is pons and medulla onwards, then the st uh, structure is reversed. Structure in the sense the arrangement of neurons. The outer part, which is normally gray matter in case of most of the part of the brain. Now here, the outer part is white matter and the inner part is gray matter. So in pons and medulla, they have gray matter inside and white matter outside. The next important thing, this is one. The second important thing is something called brain stem. Brain stem. Now brain stem is not a structure. It is actually 
many parts together which are termed as brain stem. So brain stem includes diencephalon, midbrain and pons plus sorry pons and medulla. So these are the four regions when they are uh, uh, combined together then that combined structure is known as brain stem. Basically it is known as brain stem because it acts as a stalk like structure holding the most important part of the brain above it. So this is brain stem. In brain stem in brain stem is present a system which is known as reticular activating system. <clears throat> this reticular activating system is basically a network of neurons. It is a network of neurons and its function is to uh, filter out certain sensory information or what we can call screening of sensory information. What exactly we mean by screening of this sensory information? If we are listening to something, say this video lecture, with full concentration, probably you are not aware of what is happening around you. There are things which are happening around you, but because you are so focused, this system filters or screens that sensory information to go up to your cerebral hemisphere and the other information is uh, blocked or screened. So its main function is screening of sensory information. So the, this is just a network of neurons which is found in the brain stem and it is known as reticular activation system. So with this, we have completed all the parts of brain. The ne next structure that we would take up is